Welcome back into another episode of our Madden 23 San Antonio Express Expansion Draft Only Franchise. As you see, we're in week 14 rather than 15, and you're saying, well, we played week 14 last week. We did. It didn't save. Madden's been having a lot of issues. Um, I know a patch is upcoming. I do pre-record this episode. I don't know if by the time it releases, the patch will be out yet. That is the case. Uh, it's, the patch hasn't dropped yet. Yeah, so still a lot of difficulties. If you're playing the game Madden 23, you're probably aware of them. A lot of disconnecting, you know, the draft glitch. There's a lot of which is that are making this game honestly borderline unplayable. So we're replaying this week. Took a, I think we did a fatter L than we did at the end of the last episode. <laughs> that was really bad. We got absolutely annihilated by the Titans there. But just want to quickly get through this week because uh, it should have already happened yesterday. Um, so let's just get to this. We have some replies, but uh, we lost both of them, and neither of them really impact your team's ability to play, so not too worried about replying to them. Let's just get to another week, and hopefully this week can actually save for us. Um, otherwise, that would suck. I think we are going to play this week against the Patriots and then sim against the Bills. I just feel like the Bills have a greater chance to make me want to pull my hair out than the Patriots. I feel like we can at least stick with the Patriots. I don't know. I feel like the Bears, the Bills could absolutely massacre us. So, just for my own sanity, I'll play against the Patriots this episode. And how to beat the Patriots defensively. They're top 10 in both of passing and running. It's kind of hard. We'll go with the medium pass, and then offensively, you know what we do. We run inside to kind of try to help our terrible interior offensive line with some run blocking. Well, let's try to get an interception off good old Mac Jones this week. Don't get a lot of interceptions in this uh, franchise. We just don't really have... What is going on? Why is there a triangle in the middle of my screen so we'll upgrade Lewis Smart here there are so many bugs in this game right now it's kind of nuts dude I cannot wait for this patch that's coming sometime it's coming soon it's coming sometime mid-October but I haven't got to it yet and there, there it is again sweet Coming back, we're going to redo our upgrade for Lewis Smart. Brian Pearson as well will get an upgrade. Like, I, I don't even know what's going on. Like, upgrades aren't saving, and um, just a lot of things seem to not be going well for Madden 23 right now. It's quite unfortunate. Nice, plus three to deep and medium route for Eddie Hazelton. I don't know what we can really do to fix it. It's not like the common issue. We, we didn't get, you know, the draft glitch. Just went through an offseason in Bears franchise, and that didn't get a man of the draft glitch either. So that's, we're kind of lucky with that because... It's pretty much a game-breaking glitch as we get a couple zone covers there for Quincy Boston. We'll go power back for Jeremiah Black. He'll get a couple stiff arms. And Donnie White is our tight end, too. We'll upgrade him. He does play, get some action for us. A couple short route. Very nice as a tight end, too. That's kind of what we really care about is more of the short route game. He's not going to do too much in the explosive play department. And I think we're about ready to play this game. 
So let's get into it. Get the home game here, very nice. I do like our home jerseys better than our away jerseys. The all orange with the white helmet I think looks pretty clean. I do like the Patriots color scheme as well. I like the mix of that deep blue with the, just the very strong red. I think it's a good mix for the Patriots. But can we get a win against the playoff team, New England Patriots? Um, we're kind of right in the middle of this brutal schedule that I kind of highlighted in the last episode of between weeks 11 and 17, we only play one non-playoff team, which is just nuts. And that was the team we played last episode and lost to. So that number one overall pick looks like it might be coming San Antonio's way this year. But of course, trying to get that fourth win, that was our season goal, and so... Hitting our goals is something I'm very much trying to do. 22 touchdowns to 16 interceptions for Devin Hamilton here. Not horrible, definitely not something that you're gonna look back and say, wow, Devin Hamilton's having a great year, but there's no, you know, Jameis Winston 30 interception year or anything like that. like to run away from Matt Judon here on this counter and that's gonna wait, open up some space very nice blocking there we're gonna get a gain of eight on the first down run our counters back I know a few years ago counters were great and bad and they've been not great the last couple of years but at least from that pistol formation that counter seems to work pretty well this year Devin Hamilton will just take the easy first down there Looking to go off play action here on first and ten. Gonna try to keep smart in the block just in case they do end up blitzing. They don't. We got a man open. That's Curtis Rhodes. He was open. Or Chris Rhodes. His name's not Curtis. I waited just a little bit too long to throw that ball. That's on me. We have the play. I didn't make it. Nobody's on Lewis Smart. We're gonna cut, try to go to him in the seam, and that's just an awful throw by Devin Hamilton. Brings up third and ten. Don't love to leave those easy plays on the field with those income, with those inaccurate passes as we try to go over the middle once again. A lot of plays over the middle of the field, and New, New England is. Defending them well, and that'll bring up a fourth down, and we will give the ball back to the Patriots as we pop them there on the punt return. I don't know who that was with the hit stick, but very nice job on the punt return. Punt seems pretty short in this, of itself, though. I don't know if I'm just tripping. Why am I running a three-man front? Hate three-man fronts. So you're running them out on the first play of the day. Kendrick Bourne will be open over the middle. Nine yards on the first play from the scrimmage for the Patriots. Coming off a decent game, 671 in the touchdown. And Kendrick Bourne, you can't be mad about that. Gonna come out in man coverage here. On second and one. They're going empty, and they've got their man underneath. That's Hunter Henry, the tight end. Lining out, out wide and getting the ball on second and one. Getting New England out to the 44-yard line. From the gun once again are the Patriots and Mac Jones has all day to throw and find his man underneath. Once again, Kendrick Bourne with room to run out to the 36. The defensive struggles continue here early in this one. Can't really remember the last time our defense played a game that I was pleased with. Nice run stop there by Caleb Bass. 
leaving Damien Harris for a gain of nothing. About to bring up second and ten. Once again, a check down to Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne's going to have 15 catches for like 120 yards this game. Third and one. Hunter Henry open over the middle. That's a first down for the Patriots. Five of five, 57 yards. Mac Jones is just picking us apart here. As we showed last episode, you don't need to be a good quarterback to just dice this defense up. Um, definitely something I'd like to improve in the offseason. Get some help in the secondary. I mean, we need help at all levels. We need help on the defensive line. Maybe not off-ball linebacker. I feel like our off-ball linebackers are solid. Corner safety, the whole shebang. Timmy Reed <laughs> tried to dive there. <laughs> Didn't get there, but good effort by Timmy. Gonna come out in a cover two on third and three. Once again, just too much time for Mac Jones, but he leads his man out of bounds, and that's gonna bring up fourth down. The Patriots will punt. I mean, not punt. <laughs> Imagine punting from your own ten. That'd be nuts. Uh, they will take a field goal here. Not your own ten. You should punt from your own ten. Well, from your the opponent's ten. So we got sliced and diced all the way down the field, but we get the stop when we absolutely need it. And hold the Patriots three. Can the offense come back out and respond? Well, it won't start with the kick return, as that will be a knee by Howard. Let's go. Matthew Judon needs to be blocked by Smart here, and he is. Lewis Smart's just so good, man. I mean, obviously, he's our number one receiving option, but he's also such a good blocker. I don't know how Madden generated such like a great all-around tight end. He's basically a receiver who blocks really well. And that's going to be nice blocking as well on the interior of our offensive line, springing Donovan Holmes for a first down. Been very pleased with our run blocking thus far in this game. We're going to continue with the ground here. Donovan Holmes will cut it up, finds the hole, and gains another five. Looking to go play action here on second and five. Looks like New England was ready for that corner out by Lewis Smart. It was one on one. Probably should have just taken the shot as we're one of five to start this game. Jeez, that is not good. We're going to go towards Hazleton. That would have been a first. But his second time in this game. Hamilton sells with just an inaccurate throw. The wind is seven miles per hour towards us, so no wonder our last punt was kind of short. And the sun will probably be as well. So it seems a little bit better than the last one. Giles with a great tackle in the special teams. And the Patriots will start at their own 20. And a slow start in the passing game offensively for us. Unfortunately, you know, Bill Belichick, even though he's not in Madden, you kind of just got to think of this New England Patriots defense as Bill Belichick coached, and Bill Belichick defenses always do great against rookie quarterbacks. That will be a first down catch for Hunter Henry, superstar dev. If you're in year two of the franchise, must have had a big year one. Not surprising as actual wide receiver options for the Patriots aren't all that great. They're going to go to him again and he will make another catch. Out near midfield now are the Patriots. We are showing very little resistance in between the 20s here on defense. Early on. Get in a win with D'Angelo Bramble on the pass rush move, but it's too little, too late. Mac Jones still with just the one incompletion. The, the short throws are available. And he is taking them every single time. 
Creating some pressure there with Leonard will force the throw away. Will they punt? No, they're going to go for it. I respect the decision. That's what I would have done myself. Want to go pan foul here, but we should just keep on our defensive line. And oh, pan foul just misses on the blitz. I wanted it to be ratings based, and if Kenny pan foul could make the play, he could. If he couldn't, he couldn't. And he couldn't. You have to wonder if I kept teasering him if he would have made that play. Maybe not, but maybe so. That's the pain of. Oh, can we get this? Oh, <laughs> I tried to catch that with Leonard. Didn't work out. I don't know why Harris was ruled down there. He definitely just tripped over his own man. We never touched him. But they'll rule him down. Second and five now for the Patriots. That's just kind of the pain of wanting defense to be played ratings based when your def the ratings on your defense are horrible. <laughs> so I think it's going to take quite a while for the defense to be good in this series because we are making it so ratings based by only using the defensive line. I mean, our best non-defensive line player is Quincy Boston. And then what, Michael Franklin after that? And Michael Franklin's in the 70s. So, so that's a nice screenplay. Why are you, I mean, I'll take it. He ran towards the defensive line. If he had run actually up the field, he had some blocking. This horrible pathing by a man on that one, but this time it benefited us, so I will not be complaining. We'll start the second quarter here, second and ten. England is seems like they've held the ball for the entirety of this game thus far. They're just nickel and diming us all the way down the field, and we just can't really complete a pass on the other side. So yeah, it's been all New England here early. Another screen play towards Harris, and that's going to be a great play. Kenny Panfile. With the stop, bringing up fourth down and another field goal attempt by New England. So even though it's been new, all New England early, there's still a chance for us to score a touchdown and take the lead. That would require us to be able to complete a pass. Haven't shown the ability to do that, at least consistently thus far. I will take this out to the 24 where we will start our third drive, hoping to gain a little bit more mo momentum in this drive than we have been able to do thus far. Starting with the run game, which has had some success for us in this game. Gain of four on first down there. Did not what I liked what I saw there, and I don't know. I was so desperate to complete a pass, I almost threw it to A. If that was accurate, it would have been picked, so Let's thank go. goodness for the inaccurate ball there. Third and six now. Come on. Can we not throw a completion? We got Eddie Hazelton, and I don't know how that's good accuracy. That's not good accuracy. That's awful. That's thrown so far behind him. It's the third time this game already that Devin Hamilton has had a man open but has not been able to connect. Pitts missed there on the hit stick. New England's going to start at the 28. We can't complete a pass. Hamilton's been awful. I mean, part of it's me. You know, the user has to take some of the credit here. But Hamilton's just been so bad in this game too when Timmy Reed is going to get the sack on Mac Jones finally able to create a positive play on the defensive side of the ball Mac Jones was just about to throw it to but couldn't quite get the ball off second and 15 run we will hold them to just a gain of three this is a good opportunity for the defense to get a stop for the first time today a true stop I mean we held them to field goals a couple times but those are both only semi stops and no shots 
personal foul. Roughing the passer. Was on us. Was it? No, it was on Giles. Victor, what you doing, man? Oh, they're also going to say Devontae Parker caught that ball. I thought he was out of bounds. So just like that, New England's already back in field goal territory. So much for a stop. Oh, that's frustrating. Okay. Second and sixth tile for New England. Mac Jones, plenty of time to throw. Finds his guy three yards down the field again, like he has every single play this game. Hey, there it is again. I passed three yards down the field. That judge is so impressive at quarterback. All right, here we go. In the red zone now, can we come up with yet another red zone stop? Up of the two field goals this far, want to do so yet again. Second and eight now. And a great play by John Smith to get through kind of two blockers there and make the play. Want to run match. And I want to get our zone flats to zero. We need to start stopping these short routes. That's getting really annoying. And that's going to be towards the end zone, incomplete. Two defenders there to help force the incompletion, and that'll force another field goal attempt by the Patriots. Patriots have scored three times, but luckily for us, we've been able to force them into field goals all three times. This game doesn't feel like it's too far out of reach. And they do have full momentum, as they should, honestly. They've been dominant on both sides of the ball. This score does not adequately reflect where they are in this ball game. It's been a very annoying Devin Hamilton game. I'm honestly thinking let's just run the ball every play of this drive. I, until we get like a third and five plus, I am running the ball every play of this drive. Running the ball is working, passing isn't. Time to lean into it. I don't even care that they're showing double leg gap blitz. I'm still. Looking to run this trap play. Doesn't work very much there. Third and five. So much for running every play, eh? Maybe run dagger here. Although it looks like maybe we could run the ball. If I stick with what I said. Oh, we're going to do it. We're going to run the ball. Yet again. Can we get the first and... Holmes will do it. First and ten for the Express, looking to keep the ball on the ground yet again. Going back to that counter play that worked earlier in the game. And it looks like we have a hole again. What a block by Smart. And that springs Jeremiah Black down the sideline. And he's still going down to the 16-yard line of the Patriots. A massive run play. Just what this offense needed. We can't pass at all. We have one completion here in this whole entire first half. We are finding success on the ground against these Patriots. A nice stiff arm by Jeremiah Black to get a few extra yards out of that one. And we are in scoring range finally. Due entirely to the run game. Black will get cut for no gain there, but a nice adjustment by Eli Manning seeing how the passing game was struggling to just come out full bore and try to run this ball into the end zone. Second and ten now, we will give the ball to Holmes. Finds himself a lane forward and will get five, bringing up third and four. That'd be a pass. Third and four. We're really going to at least come out and pass. That is, it looked very ready for the run there. I'm going to try to hit Smart in the end zone, and he catches it, but they're going to say he's down at the one. Our second completion this entire game. Well, we're at the half-yard line. You know what we're trying to do here in this franchise. It's very simple. 
when you need a half yard. QB sneak is very reliable in Madden. And we will get it this time around. Touchdown, San Antonio. We get ourselves on the board. Thanks almost entirely to the run game. Can't overstate Lewis Smart's importance on that drive, too. Caught the lone ball, as well as had a very key block on that big running play by Jeremiah Black. Like his speed and his running blocking ability make that counterplay really good. I don't know if it's as good if you have a slower tight end or just a tight end that doesn't block as much. But man, having a guy like Lewis Smart pulling is awesome. Yeah, that counter play, we also have like a strong power play that has Lewis Smart pulling like that. I think those plays are just going to be really good because of a kind of a rare generated tight end you can get in Lewis Smart that has that combination of speed and blocking is just not very common in this game. But can the defense get a stop here? Keep this to a two-point ball game. So far, the answer has been no. Is yes, 16 completions for 140 yards. He's just getting seven yards of play. And that's a good formula against this defense. Really, whatever you want to try is probably a good formula against this defense. We're not really equipped to stop anything. Down the field, wow. Mac Jones threw a pass more than 10 yards down the field. Let's give him a round of applause as he hits Hunter Henry on the sideline. Great catch by him. He was so hesitant to throw that far down the field that he almost threw it too late as he throws once again this time downfield and Devontae Parker is breaking tackles from the entire secondary but is eventually brought down. And yeah, this defense continues to be terrible. Going deep downfield towards Damian Harris, that will be incomplete. All of a sudden, Mac Jones is becoming aggressive here in this drive. Minutes up and 15 left to go in this game as Mac Jones will throw towards the sidelines. Complete for Devontae Parker. Or at least they're going to review it. That looked very easily complete to me, and it will be upheld. That wasn't even worth the review. That was just a waste of time for the officials. It was very clearly a completion. Damien Harris will get the carry, and I thought he was going to score there, which would have been embarrassing. Instead, we'll, he'll only get 13 of the 16 yards he needed. England's calling a timeout. I don't know why. I know... Madden has had this coded in for a very long time, and it makes no sense. Like, what like evidence do they have to support that this should be done? But if they have more than one timeout, the CPU will always call a timeout with one minute left. Without fail. Nice pass break up there in the end zone. 24 first half attempts for Mac Jones. They've been on the field a lot. We've really only had one drive in this game. And that'll be a touchdown to Hunter Henry. Not too exciting. You kind of knew it was coming. We couldn't do really anything to stop them. You knew we weren't going to stop three straight games, three straight plays from the three-yard line. Picking up, you know, three yards is Mac Jones' specialty this game, so... Saw that one coming for a while, as that will be returnable by Howard and Heath. That was a solid return there. Thought he might break his second of the year. Instead, we'll have 51 seconds to try to make something happen in this... to end this half. Trying to go downfield towards Eddie Hazleton and the inaccurate pass once again. Mm, okay. Maybe we try to get a 
An out route towards Smart, perhaps? And he gets he gets bumped like four times. What is that, dude? It's intercepted. That is illegal contact, Madden. How is that not called? He literally gets bumped like four times trying to outbreak. He was going to be wide open. That's why I threw him the ball. The play was good. Gonna up to right back. Thank goodness for Victor Giles. Snuffing out the screenplay, but what was that? Nice celebration there by Victor Giles. Trying to get the ladies there with that pose, probably. Oh. We're going to run a screenplay now. We just got an interception off of it. Let's see if we can get something good out of it. Jeremiah Black will get towards the sideline. Second and one. 26 seconds left in this first half. Trying to see if we can get something deep downfield. Two roads for Hamilton. We're going to... Oh, my goodness, dude. Devin Hamilton cannot throw an accurate ball this game. He just can't. He's incapable of accuracy. Gonna give Lewis Smart a chance to build and he's gonna make the catch. Lewis Smart finds himself out of bounds to the 24 yard line. 4 of 14 for 60 yards in the pick. Oh, easily. Devin Hamilton's worst game so far. He's been awful. Lewis Smart has a. Ch Dude, what is Devin Hamilton doing this game? He literally cannot throw an accurate ball. It's frustrating. Gonna give Devin Hamilton a chance one on one and he makes the catch. Finally, we get one of those to work. And it happens as the second half clock winds down and we will make this a close game in a game that really hasn't been close at all. We find ourselves down just three with a chance to trim it to two. And uh, half number one in this one. It's been a crazy game. It's been very frustrating for the most part, but... <laughs> Somehow we're down only two. I don't know how. It's very hard for me to imagine that we'll have a worse half than what we just had. Of course, the potential for being worse is always inside. I think you made that little goal. Nice job. Um, but we started allowing touchdowns rather than field goals. That's definitely an opportunity for us to get worse, but I mean, offensively, it's going to be hard. Devin Hamilton played awful, awful football. Of course, his last play was a beautiful throw to Eddie Hazleton, who made a great adjustment. Found himself in the end zone. I guess we just have to stick with the run more in that second half we had that one drive where the run game basically took us all the way down couldn't do it again after that because just because of time but yeah I do want to continue to run the ball so we'll do run inside and we should defend the short pass that's all Mac Jones does except for unless it's a two minute drill then I'll start throwing the ball downfield Walker will make another field goal. And if only these counted it, we'd be up at this point. Can the defense get some stops here? That'll be a nice start. Michael Franklin making the play. Not giving Harris an inch there on that one. Over the middle, underneath. Kendrick Bourne goes for six, third and four for the Patriots now. We're going to press. Need to get a stop here. Show this home crowd that we're actually capable of it. Instead, Mac Jones has 90 years to throw the ball. And the ladies ran out of bounds, luckily. 
Hard to imagine a four-man rush doing any worse than what we just saw. But we don't get burned for it. Rambo back to return the punt. Has some room and he'll get a nice return here. Can we beat 21 to the corner now? The offense has the opportunity to come out and take a lead here. We are going to try to stick with the run game a little bit. I'm running a stretch play. I mean, a lot of congestion there. And Jeremiah Black just unable to get past the congestion. He had that little spin, but wasn't able to create a lot of room with it. I like the box that we're looking at here on second and long, so I'll run it again. Holmes doesn't gain as much as I thought he would. Over 100 rushing yards on the day. We're putting the ball in Hamilton's hands. They've been very shaky hands this game. We're going to give him a chance. Don't really love the yeah. Certainly don't love the results. No one was open on that play. We can't be man coverage. Man coverage is ridiculously overpowered in this game. And Damian Harris will gain nine on first down. Lovely. Dang it, man. Oh. Another poor accuracy throw from Devin Hamilton. Throws it right to the defense, man. Whenever we find ourselves in a position in the draft and thinking, should we stick with Hamilton long term? I think we got to remember this game. He's been so bad. Of course, you got to give him an opportunity to improve. It is his rookie year, but it's everyone's rookie year on this team. And he's legitimately the reason that we're losing in this game. That's a great play by John Smith in the backfield. Bringing up second and goal from the 13 now for the Patriots. Just absolutely beats that block from Cole Strange. Or I don't know if it was Cole Strange. Whoever he was on him. Absolutely sheds that block. In. What is that defense, dude? Oh. oh, this game is testing my... And I'll just tell you this, when my patience is tested, I don't win very often. You ask a list of my family and friends, my, you know, good attributes, patience is not among them. Look at this blocking, dude. Just runs, he, 37 long just gets bounced off of. What is that, dude? Like, he does not stop. He doesn't even alter the path of that New England defender. He literally just gets bounced five yards to the side. So dumb. Going to go underneath too long here. Gain of nine. Six of 18. Oh, my goodness. It's not the fact that we're losing that's testing my patience. We've lost a ton, but what can mean then? It's just the BS from Matt in this game is really... The BS is strong, and he... Are you kidding me? He got bumped! He was going to be open, dude! How many times is the CPU going to get away with this? Boom! Oh my hell, dude. Oh, this game is driving me nuts. Nice blocking there by New England. We'll get Harris a game of nine and a half on first down. Just gotta move on. Move on to the next play. Timmy Reed. The user there, and Kendrick Bourne just breaks tackles. Because Kendrick Bourne moonlights as Derrick Henry in his spare time. And that'll be a first down for New England. Alert! Alert! And try to press here. Critically. 
Timmy Reed gets the win, but Parker down the field, unable to make the catch. Quincy Boston in coverage. Second and ten now for the Patriots. Mac Jones back to pass once again. Has all the time in the world. Finds Hunter Henry wide open. Gain of 18. Now first and ten from the ten for the Patriots. I'm going to be honest, my patience is about finished with this game right now. It's about finished. I don't know if we're finishing this game. I'm sorry. I'm about ready to say words that aren't safe for YouTube. Mac Jones fights his man underneath, and it's a touchdown. On some weird, glitchy animation, of course. Why wouldn't it be on some weird glitchy animation? Oh, I know this is an instrumental lead and I should probably play the game out, but I'm really tempted to just simulate to the end of this game. I am so tired with Madden's BS this game, dude. I've thrown two interceptions on actual illegal plays from the defense. Devin Hamilton has more inaccurate throws than he has actually catchable balls this game. The Patriots throw for four yards every freaking play and there's nothing I can do about it. Oh. All right, let's get back the offense out onto the field. Got a hold. Are you really going to call a hold right now? Yeah, you are. Holding offense. Really? Everything else in the hap that's happening in the game, this BS, isn't isn't enough for you. Person 20 now. Okay. Nice throw and catch. And he, and he fumbled it. He fumbled the ball. Why? I'm so done with Madden right now, dude. How? Yep, we. I'm done. I'm done. Cool touchdown. No, I'm. I'm. I'm done with this game. I'm not. I. I. I, I can't handle this game anymore right now. Oh my goodness. Oh. Great. Adding insult to injury, dude. Oh my goodness. We're jumping right here into the those games straight away. This game is actually broken. Um, I've been disconnected off screen about like a bunch of times in the last couple of weeks. Or, I mean, like, actual last couple of weeks in, in game, not like four weeks in real life. Although I have been getting disconnected for a while now. But it's getting a lot worse. Like, I'm being asked to re upgrade players that we've already upgraded. I'm sure we'll see it after this game again. That, like, guys that I upgraded earlier in this video are just gonna still have not be upgraded. I don't know what to do. This game is legitimately busted. Um. Look, Quincy Boston, we already upgraded him. Jeremiah Black, Michael Franklin, we already upgraded all these guys, man. They're not saving. I don't know what to do. This game is not functioning. It only, like, adds, adds insult to injury that we also had. Look, because we got that plus two. He was at 70. He got plus two to 72. We just did another one. He's at 71 because the other upgrade we did in a previous week in the game so it's not even just like oh it didn't say what you already did this week no that was a previous week that we upgraded quincy boston i honestly don't know what to do the game's not saving anything and we had like that great route running upgrade from eddie hazelton that's just disappeared which is infuriating we had plus three medium and deep route on him for an upgrade and and it's just like nope that, that never happened 
So we're getting worse upgrades now, and I don't. They're probably not even going to save anyway. I just don't know how I can fix the issue. Um. I'm I'm at a loss just because. Who knows? We might be coming into next episode, and we're all of a sudden we're back at the Bills, or who knows? Maybe even the Patriots again. I just feel like we're in a tough spot here. I can't even do the replies because we're probably going to get disconnected. I just need to move ahead to another week. And I'm honestly wondering. Obviously, this would suck because I don't want to end the season earlier. You know, we're supposed to play the Chargers, have not faced our division rival Chargers this year. But I'm almost wondering, I've seen a lot of other franchises going through different glitches and stuff, and a lot of the things that you just need to create a new save point. And I wonder if getting to the end of the regular season is going to create a new save point. Um, maybe then, like, the upgrades will save. We're not spending too much time on any week, so hopefully that'll keep us from disconnecting. Is Michael Franklin had an excellent game in Buffalo. 14 tackles, two picks is great. I'm just wondering if that's the best thing for us. And so I'm sorry if you're really invested in this Chargers game next episode. But I think just for the actual like integrity of this franchise, I'm going to try to create a new save point at the end of the regular season. Uh, we do end up losing both of those games, dropping to 3-14. and 14, I think that puts us on an eight-game losing streak to end the year. So I'm sorry we ended the Season 1 episode earlier than I wanted to, but the game's just legitimately broken right now. I'm very worried to go through the draft because of the draft glitch as well. I don't want to lose this franchise. I'm very invested. I had a I had a really awesome, fun time for the majority of this franchise. This episode, yes, was a little bit more frustrating. Um, the Madden cheese was in full effect in the gameplay, and then just afterwards, I have not been able to do anything. And so, hopefully this will this will have worked, though. I don't want this franchise ruined at all. I want to keep it going. And let's look at the upgrades here. We have Lewis Smart. I haven't seen like Quincy Boston yet, which is a good sign for Eddie Hazelton. I mean, it's a, there's a chance they would get another upgrade because we have simulated a few weeks, but I don't think so. It's usually a, like five or so weeks, five plus weeks between upgrades. Another strength for Pearson. I think he's playing up to 99. Yeah, he's his strength is maxed out at this point. We don't need any more strength for our boy. Can we get some more actual blocking upgrades, please? Going to go slot for Chris Rhodes. He has played his last game as an express. He did not want to resign, and we're not resigning players who don't want to resign, at least of these UDFAs. If there's, I don't know, if like Lewis Smart doesn't have interest in resigning in four years, I'm resigning him. I don't care. I'm not losing Lewis Smart in this franchise. But like, of the these UDFAs, if they didn't want to come back, I'm not overpaying like a 70 overall receiver. It's, he's probably not going to get a contract, so he probably by not wanting to re-sign with us. Might have just played his last NFL snap, if we're being honest. Wide receiver is so incredibly deep in the league. Um, Deshaun Walton is our third best lineman, so we'll manually upgrade him. Probably going to do a lot of just auto upgrades here for the people who don't play big roles. Because as I've said before, if you're on the bench in season one of a franchise like this, you're probably never going to be a player. Kenny Panfile wasn't a bench rider, but you know, he's like the least important starter on our defense. That did make some plays for us this year, though, especially in the run game. Didn't really do much in the past, but uh, was a very good run defender for us. And it looks like we have finished the coaching tree. But why can't we? Oh, yeah, because you have to only use it when a player has no interest in signing you, and then you do it. Yeah, okay. Cool. So now we're just at this point, we're just getting two of twos on some things that we don't really need because the things that we wanted two of two, we already have two of two on as well. So the coaching tree after year one is done. 
So that's fun. And it's just getting two of two, and then we'll have things like resetting a tree. Don't really want that. Slowing regression, I don't think. Like maybe if we had a really important 24 or 23 year old rookie here in year one by the end of the franchise, that would be, you know, relevant. But what was awesome about this year's draft class is a lot of the guys I really liked were 21 years old. I mean, that being 21 years old goes into how much I like you as a prospect. But like a lot of just the best players were 21 years old, maybe a couple of 22 year olds in there. But we had a lot of 21 year old rookies this year, which was awesome. Because we need that extra year of being like in the young phase for sure in this franchise. So we're going to simulate through the playoffs. We will go through stats and stuff this episode as well. Um, get everything ready for the draft. And then next episode will be the offseason slash mostly just the draft for us. We'll like go through the you know free agency recap and stuff like that. Because everyone else is doing free agency. But for us, it's really just for the draft. Lewis Smart. Is a pro bowler, no surprise there. At one point, he was the leading receiver in the entire league. I don't imagine with all the simulating we did, as Timmy Reed also makes it as DT1. So it looks like he finished out the year strong as well. Um, don't have any other surprise. We didn't get kick returner or especially kicker. Uh, we had a, I mean, I guess we're not the only ones with kick return touchdowns. I'm sure it happened elsewhere in the league, as we'll see. Um, we're going to get through this week. Two Pro Bowlers. Um, no surprise Pro Bowlers, but the two guys that I would expect both made it, they both made it as the starter at their position, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's look at some yearly awards as we see the Cowboys and the Chiefs. Ugh, the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Get that off my screen, man. Don't want to see that. Go Chiefs! Patrick Mahomes wins MVP, and whoa. Okay, Matthew Welker's best kicker, but I was trying to go back to coach of the year of the 6-11 and 11 Jets. So it's really Nick Sirianni's coach of the year. How did he win the award at 6-11? and 11? Did he, like, overcome cancer or something? I mean, it, if he did, props to him, but he's a video game character. He did not overcome cancer. <laughs> Just another example of what... <laughs> Of the wackiness of this game. Austin Eckler is Offensive Player of the Year in the AFC. Our division rival. Don't love to see it. No Express. We got Timmy Reed at 6 in Depoy with Miles Garrett winning. Lewis Smart wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. No surprise. Second and pl third place were both non-Express, though. And that was a bit of surprising for me. Timmy Reed wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Again, no surprise. Michael Franklin does win second place. So we get second place in D-Roy as well. Best quarterback... We don't have an express, best running back. We don't have an express, best receiver. No express, best offensive line. No express, best defensive line. Timmy Reed makes it um, at number four. Best linebacker. No express, best DB. No express, best kicker, Matthew Welker. So we have the best kicker in the league and the fourth best defensive lineman in the, I guess, conference, not league. And other than that, we don't have a top 10 in anything, which is great considering there's only 16 teams. <laughs> We're in the bottom six everywhere except for one defensive lineman and our kicker. So that's great. Devin Hamilton was in the top 10 in yards that we saw for a second. 26 touchdowns to 20 interceptions. Ends up with positive. Um, I think he did, he, he did a lot of solid things for this series. I think just the way the Pittsburgh game ended where he had two really inaccurate throws, and we probably could have won that game otherwise. And then that Patriots game was just even worse. The way he ended the season definitely put a sour taste in my mouth. Did get four additional uh, touchdowns in the air. 14.58 and 10, 12.03 and 806 basically, and then 5.80 and 6. The running backs we saw, I kind of just skipped over them as we look at Brian Pearson. A lot, so many sacks. Eli Shea, a lot, a lot too, considering he was injured. 174 tackles, 99 solo. That's a lot of tackles for Franklin. Um, 13 and a half sacks. And 22 TFLs for Timmy Reed. Definitely deserving of his 
places in the awards, four people with double-digit TFLs. But just going back to the running game, we saw that both of our running backs were at or above four yards per carry. Makes you think about whether or not we really need a guy like Kevon Simmons in the draft, that guy that I'm pretty sure is a generational running back. Yes, getting a generational running back is good, but do we need a running back? Um, I don't honestly know. I don't honestly know. I mean, I am in the position, as we kind of look at the team's stats here, 32 defensively in yards, 19 in points, and 32 in points defensively. Yeah, our defense is just like, look at those stats right there. It's hard not to just basically go all in on the defense in the draft, maybe passing on who's going to be the best player in the draft in Kevon Simmons. It's hard to, it's, it's going to be a difficult question. One that I'm going to have to ponder between this episode and next. Anthony Cloud, warning number 23. We're probably going to have to fix that for the Bucks. Devin Hamilton tied the league lead in the interceptions uh, with Kirk Cousins. Of the starters, Lamar Jackson had the highest completion percentage in the league. Didn't have a lot of yards per game, though, not even 220. Um, of the starters, Patrick Mahomes had the highest yards per attempt at just under 10. We have co rushing leaders this year between Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry, both in the same division. And then there's a pretty steep drop off after that, over 250 yards of a drop off. As we continue to go through here, see, we're not having numbers like these in the running game. We did split a lot of carries, but like Jeremiah Black had 200. He didn't have a ton less than these other guys. Lewis Smart ends up with third in the NFL in receiving yards. Let's go to average per game, though. Okay, so average per game, he's actually fourth. Cooper Cup looks like he got injured. But even if he hadn't gotten injured, he wouldn't have led the league. Like he seems like he almost always does. He always has like 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. 22 touchdowns from Godwin is crazy. Blocking. Did Pearson lead the league in sacks allowed? Yes, he did, but he tied with Charles Cross. Derisaw one behind him. Nope, boom, two behind him. Michael Franklin led the league in tackles by a lot, by 23 tackles more than anyone else in the league. So, dev up for him? I mean, sack, I mean, look at that. Look at all the, in terms of assists, like our entire team was the people uh, that were leading in assisted tackles. Nick Bosa with 26 sacks, 22 and a half with 30 TFLs for uh, Miles Garrett's crazy. And then Max Crosby, a guy that we gave to the Chiefs with over 20. Um, Boswell's the Pro Bowl kicker. I don't know. He made one more field goal. And so he gets it, even though Matthew Wilker was 100% and had just one less than him. Doesn't make much sense to me. He did miss an extra point, however, during the year, did Wilker. So he wasn't like 100% per- perfect. The leading punter was Logan Cook because we will not recognize the man above him. And in terms of net average, that guy only had seven punts. So yeah, Logan Cook was the best punter in the league. Go Logan Cook. Had about one, two, three, about six or so touchdown returns in the league. And we had two of them. So hey, we're good at something in the league. We are good at returning kicks for touchdown. We had two of the six that happened in the entire league. Or maybe it was seven. I just kind of counted quickly. Who will win the Super Bowl? It's the Chiefs. Thank goodness. Over the Cowboys. Time to spend some upgrades. A lot of these guys are just practice squad guys that are not even 60 overall. I'm not going to manually upgrade them. Lewis Smart for winning Offensive Rookie of the Year and making it to the Pro Bowl and stuff will get a couple of upgrades. And so he started, I think, 75, so a plus 9 year for him. All you got to do is win Rookie of the Year and make the Pro Bowl, and you can get plus 9 in the year with the mentor. He also had a mentor, mind you, So, but not for the entire year. Maybe if he has it for the entire year, he gets another upgrade, and we're talking about a plus 10 in year 1. That'd be cool. Welker gets, I think he was a 77, so he gets a plus three year. I mean, that's not great considering, you know, he won best at his position, but he's also a kicker and he's probably already one of the better in the league. Timmy Reed gets a couple of grades here. 
going to go into Speed Rusher. He gets nice speed rushing. Um, base, he's going to be into the green at 76. And he, I think it was like a 74, so I think he also had a plus nine year. So there's the formula. Win rookie of the year, get to the Pro Bowl, have a mentor for half the year, and you're going to get plus nine. Looking at any other potential other dev increases offensively, we don't have any. Wasn't really expecting any. Um, other than Lewis Smart, everyone just kind of had solid years. I mean, Hazleton did have 1,200 yards, but only three touchdowns, so I didn't think he was going to get upgraded to Superstar. Um, where's the one that gives you, like, increased stiff arms or something? Oh, there it is, Bruiser. Powerful truck and stiff arm. You need to be 84 overall. We're only one away, so I guess we're just going to have to find something to have until he gets that upgrade, which shouldn't be too long. Short out of lead, maybe. Oh, bulldozer, armbar. There they are on the tank. Um, probably just going to end up choosing armbar for now and then going up to bruiser once he gets to 85 overall. And then also coming deep in elite also makes sense for him. But we got to wait for that one as well. Uh, for now, we just, nah, let's do, let's do armbar for now. And then once he gets that upgrade, we'll switch it to bruiser. I mean, he's a big tight end. He came into the league, and he had high break tackle and trucking and stiff arm, from what I remember. So I think those would make sense for him. Defensively, Michael Franklin stays at normal. Really, he led the ta league in tackles by like 20. How does that not get you star dev? I mean, he would have won rookie of the year if it wasn't for Timmy Reed, so... I guess maybe Timmy Reed has a part to play in that. Is that a kind of a forced situation, though? You lead the league in tackle by 20, and you're not even a star? I'd lean towards no here, as we kind of have to wait for Timmy Reed to get to 85 as well. 90 if we want El Toro, which would make sense because his power moves are already so good. We'll just leave Unfakeable for now. Wait till he's 85 overall, which will take two upgrades, which... Shouldn't be too deep into the next season before he gets two upgrades. Um, especially if we get another mentor at his position. I don't know if we will. He's kind of already good. Don't know if he needs a mentor. But that's kind of all I have for this episode. Ended up finishing the season one episode too early. So if you're invested, I am sorry for that. But I'm excited for the offseason. I get a chance to improve this team. We desperately need it. And so I'm going to be doing a ton of work for the draft and hopefully you'll be along beside me for the ride. And I will see you for that in that next episode. Peace.